Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Hashtag Gaming Arena YouTube channel. Today, we're reviewing our first playthrough of BT10. On the left side, we have me, Soy, playing Blue Door Mod, and we have, on the right side, we have... It's Michael. How's it going? And he is going to be playing Crossheart. Now, you project Cross, you project Bloom Lord to be top of the format, and explain why you think that. Uh, I do think it would be... It's, it's at its half state right now. Um, it's definitely going to be one of the top decks in the format coming into EX3 that's coming in a couple weeks, uh, just because it has a bunch of options. Like, it has effects that... Like, Currently, right now in BT10, it has security plus, and you get to spam the board with a lot of things. Um, even though they are suspended, it's still just bodies that your opponent would have to deal with. So, and in, in this format, I feel like that would be it's something that's really strong. Um, just having a big board presence. Um, and coming into B, going into EX3, there's a new card that lets you bottom deck a card once per turn and gain memory. Um, Hydramon, or so I think it's gonna be a good deck for now. Yeah, so this matchup is uh, is going to be pretty interesting because Crossheart has that speed that Bloom Lord is still pretty fast, doesn't necessarily have. It's a different kind of speed. Yeah, it's a different kind of speed. Um, but Crossheart's going to struggle to get over Bloom Lord's Cherry Mon specifically, which lets it redirect attacks to uh, any suspended Digimon once per turn per Cherry Mon. Um, so what we're going to see here is can Bloom Lord overwhelm Crossheart or can Bloom Lord outspeed Crossheart before it finds all its pieces? And we're going to get started here. Um, not sure who's going first. I think you're explaining something to me. <laughs> I rolled an eight, and then you rolled a ten, so you're going to be going first. Yeah. Uh, Crossheart, I think believes. I think I believe it wants to go first because it can drop that Taiki Tamer early and get its search off. Yep, and then you have set up for going, starting to raise out and swinging mm -hmm. freely, and start saving all your pieces. So yeah, there's that Taiki we're talking about. Searching the top four, you put a Digimon underneath, and then add a. Uh, cross art to hand, and so adding cross four to hand, putting that shout monitor underneath, you already have two out of your four pieces that you yep. need. Getting the Taiki turn one definitely speeds up the deck a lot more. Using that green memory boost to find the Palmumon. Now, Palmumon is a really interesting card because last set when it was released, nobody played it. it. There was no use to play it. But can't play Digimon, but FX shuts down Jessmon specifically. Yep, Jessmon, the Mirror Match, and Bloom Lord. A um, couple other decks, like even Lord Knight, if anyone still plays Lord Knight Mon nowadays. Or so. And even like Mastermon, it stops Master. It slows down Mastermon. And so we saw this new uh, green option card, Grandel Soul, which returns a, as as far as I believe, a suspended Digimon to the it's, bottom of their deck. So it's an eight cost option card that can be reduced by two if you have two more suspended on, uh, two more Digimon suspended on your side of the board. Uh, what it does is it suspends one of your opponent's Digimon, then it returns one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of their deck. So it was a little, it's a little different than Ground Fang. Um, in BT9, Ground Fang just returned. One suspended to the bottom of the deck. This one actually now sets itself up. I see. Well, so over on your side, we see you're going to drop down that Taiki and that Zenjiro, and that Zenjiro is going to let you bring out the Ballistamon. And the cool thing about Zenjiro is that if you have a Ballistamon in hand, it is almost always a two cost because yep. you can drop it, drop that Ballistamon, and then tap down Zenjiro to uh, to gain one memory. And so now on my turn, I'm dropping the Palmon and going into the Sunflowmon, using the Sunflowmon to suspend itself when Digivolving to drop a three cost or, or 3,000 or less. And so this is how Bloom Lord's going to swarm the board. It is a lot of these little effects such as Agitarmon, Sunflowmon, and Bloom Lord himself that that lets you drop these uh, cheaper and these smaller 3k or lower bodies. <clears throat> uh, it's not Blue Mord, actually. It's only to some oh, yeah, and yeah. Mon. Yeah. Blue Mord just gets benefits from having things to spend on your board, which Ips, uh, Sunflowmon and Angitarmon both do themselves, which is really nice. And so now we see a key card in this format. It's going to be that Crimson Blaze coming out. And Crimson Blaze is going to wipe my board and it reduces its cost for how many... Uh, for how many Digimon I have on board. So that was a three cost Crimson Blaze, and you were able to kind of reset momentum there. Yep. I do think Crimson Blaze is a really, really strong card. Um, me personally, I think it should be limited, but because, <laughs> like, like I've, been, I've been telling you all the time, it doesn't check, it doesn't compare board states, it only checks your opponent. So if you have five things on board and I have five things on board, I can drop it for one cost, kill, potentially kill off your entire board, and mm -hmm. I still get to keep all of my dudes. So I think it's just super strong. And then also the secondary effect on it where, um, your opponent can't play card by card, or can't play Digimon by card effects. It's also just really strong. It stops uh, Bloom Lord and uh, Jessmon for a turn, and now we're seeing this aggression that Crossheart has. Crossheart is able to raise and swing these rookies without little consequence, as they have that Taiki there, uh, dropping that cross four. Even though you would say that Crossheart just got started, being able to drop its first cross four. Notice how I'm already at two security. 
Yeah, Crossheart is, cross is essentially kind of just like a Rookie Rush deck. You play a bunch of your little cards that have saves, and then they get saved, and then you can use those resources that you just swung with to go into a bigger bigger Digimon. So. so now I'm going to evolve into that Sunflowmon using its effect to suspend the Cherrymon, drop the Palmon. Now I have three bodies on board. Um, Bloom Lord, if you don't know, gains memory based on how many suspended Digimon you have on the board. It's a four-cost Evo, but if you have four suspended Digimon on its board, including itself, it's practically free. Yeah, but it's specifically for plant vegetation and uh, fairy. Which is everything in your which deck. Is, yeah. Which should be ideally everything in your deck. Yes, correct. And so now with one memory... Um, I can play Hidden Potential Discovered. Now, that, again, this card, there's a reason why it's limited. It's great. It let's me evolve into the Agit Harmon for only for free by suspending my Palmon. I can suspend that Agit Harmon to drop another rookie. And now I'm set up for a big swing from a Blue Lord. Yep, I'm going to so tap down the Agit Harmon, drop it. down the... B is that BT4 Palmon? Uh, BT3, I believe. BT3, yes. One of the first original Palmons that ever came out for the Digimon card game. What it does is reveals top three. You get to add a level, specifically a level four green Digimon to your hand. It's another, it's another search card. There are chances for it to whiff, but um, but yeah, even with that HPD, now you have just ways to go into your Bloomord, like you said, for four cost, and then you get to gain all that memory back because Bloomord also, when Digivolving, he gets on, he gets to suspend one of your Digimon, including, and it can be itself, to then gain the memory back. And then if it gains two or more memory, it will unsuspend gain pi and, and gain, gain piercing, piercing, right? Correct. Yeah. Gain piercing for the turn. Correct. And so now, <clears> looking <throat> that I have uh, four suspended Digimon once I swing, I'm able to go for three checks here. Correct, because it gains security plus one and 2,000 DP for every two. So you have four suspended, so you'll gain security plus two, as well as for a total of 4K DP. DP increase. And I mean, in this in this, in this this format, DP isn't really punished. Low DP isn't really punished all that much because some of the best decks in the format are only running smaller things. You have Jessmon with the occasional Jessmon GX, the Jessmon X and antibody being in security, but you don't really have these gigantic bodies you have to deal with. And now I'm pushing up this powerful board stay. I have two Cherrymons on board <coughs> and I have the Bloom Lord on, this, on the board, leaving you at one memory. If you swing right now, it's going to go straight into the Bloom Lord and you're going to yep. lose that Jessmon. Yep, I am, which I'm, going, I'm still going to do just so I can say some materials and I believe I have another one in hand another cross four in hand just to get some more card draw see if there's a way I can answer the board um, yes but going back to hidden potential discovered hidden potential discover is actually one of the really important pieces cards of this deck of bloom the uh, the bloom more deck because if you have your befoiled field set up at level fives, you can hit in potential discovered go in the bloom Lord for free and then just gain all that memory so you can actually plus on memory and now it looks like you're you're struggling to find those star mons there, using those Angie's to draw, uh, or using those uh, Akari's to draw, and the Zenjiro to gain memory. But you have to drop that cross four for three memory, which kind of hurts. It you does. don't, you're not able to start getting that loop in. If you swing here, I still have another Cherry Mon redirect, so it's gonna again point straight at the Blue More, uh, straight at the Blue More. It's gonna go straight into it. You get that two draw, you get that save, but it isn't that ideal save you're looking for. You're not able to save all four pieces. Correct. Um, in this case, I believe I'm only trying to save the ones that I don't have currently in my hand. Which, at least from the cross four plays, I, I actually do, I use so. And then this one, I'm going to go into cross five just to get a blocker on the board and hopefully potentially um, block the last attack. I can't block Bloom Lord just because he already has piercing, so there's no point. Um, but the idea is to at least prevent uh, the final attack. But with a now coming to be five wide board, you have one block, you have two security. Yep. Um, it, I mean, it looks like it's game over. It's really interesting. People projected Blue Cross Art to completely dominate this format, but I'm seeing more weakness in it than I thought I was going to see. It is still a great deck, but when you can't find one of your pieces, when you can't find that Star Mons, that Darulamon, that Ballistamon, and especially you can't find that Shoutmon, you're not able to do those free combos that you've, you're going for. And especially the Taiki. Not being, not being able to find your Taiki or even carry it to let you start crossing from your Tamers really hurts, because then that means you just have to save all the cards in your hand rather than playing, having them swing early. And so that's one po one game for Bloom Lord going into game two. What would you be? What were you thinking right now? Now playing against Bloom Lord, what is the strategy for Crossheart to be able to counter this deck? Um, ideally, it would just be you have to start killing stuff um, before they get to their level five. Level fives, uh, they're already past the six K threshold, so you can't Crimson Blaze them. Um, so or or ideally, just find Sunrise Busters early on and start playing them and potentially trying to kill off any bigger threats than 6k dp and this is that this is that fast green progression we're talking about it's that you give me four memory i'm able to go into a level five even without a rookie yep 
But now yeah. you have two bodies on board. Are you able to find a tamer to be able to save them? And so you choose not to swing because you don't have those tamers to save under. You don't have that protection. You're putting down uh, only the star ones of the cross. Oh, you're getting that Darula one underneath too. That's going to be a three cost. You still get it to keep your turn and you get those two draws. Uh, once you swing, you're going to get that extra draw off the star mons. But you want to be careful here because if you swing in that dies in security, you don't have a tamer to set everything underneath. Yep. So you're going to drop that. You're going to drop that Zenjiro just to play it safe and start potentially getting places to save. Yep. Uh, one of the things I actually realized now, I think with Cross Crossfire, I actually do think you want to go second. Um, just because getting that extra memory on your first turn when you ideally, your ideal turn is just playing out, um, like uh, Digivolving a Rookie in the Hatchery and then just playing your Tamer, you want to be able to choke your opponent early on rather than That's giving true. them three memory at the start of their turn. Um, and even then, even if you, and especially if you're going second, and if your opponent has like a rookie on the board because they play it for a search, you have the uh, Akari and the Darulamon to minus 3k DP to it. So if you have Akari and, and the Darulamon, you play the Akari to play the Darula to minus 3k to his board, so he's made his first turn entirely useless. And so, uh, so something that's really interesting about Cross 4 here is that you're choosing to swing into the Agitarmon just to make sure you can save, just to make sure you are able to keep your sources. Looking at your hand, it looks like your resources are kind of limited right now. You're not able to get everything that you're, that you're looking for, especially because you don't have a Taiki on board. If things save underneath, you're not able to bring them out by yep. any means. Yeah. So now raising out that Palmumon, getting that Agitarmon on board, using the Mimi to hatch another egg. Mimi's a great tempo setter for this. Um, for this deck because you're just trying to get as many rookie or as many bodies out in board and Mimi's gonna help you raise out one every single turn I'm gonna suspend that Ajatarm on a drop the power one able to do that search and uh, We're seeing that Reflezium on here. I know you've dropped Reflezium on your deck But why did you play it in this So originally I the reason why I put it in the deck was one because it's a fairy type So you can actually search it out with the new power moments on the board here and then um, Right now in the deck list uh, because there's no other better options you play the BT4 Weedmon just because it's a vegetation that's 3k DP, but also has an inheritable that if it gets trashed from a Digiburst, you gain a memory. So, and also just the, on the fact that for Flesimon, it's a level 6 that can Digivolve on top of level 5, but it can also Digivolve on top of another level 6. So ideally, like, the turn after you have Blue Mord, you go into Blue Mord, it loses that piercing for the turn. It's really just a body that you can swing with. You can go onto a Flesimon on top of it, uh, Digiburst the Weedmon, gain that extra memory back. And then, um, like, ideally stun something on the board that you that you can't particularly get rid of. And so now we're seeing the power of this Blue Mord deck. You use the Sunflow Mon to bring out the Red Veggie Mon and the, even the Argomon for free. And now I immediately have more bodies off the board after only having two for a while. That Pyro Ball is going to pop the Red Veggie Mon. That's going to make, make it harder for me to go into another Bloom Lord. Um, it's going to make it harder for me to go into another Bloom Lord as I only have four bodies on board. But now we're looking at... Uh, we're looking at that Argomon Inheritable. That ability to play out a, a 3,000 DP or less is going to be able to let me get that fourth, uh, fourth <coughs> Digimon on board. But so, since that Argomon is already suspended, I can play out that Digimon uh, when I'm attacking, and that Digimon's going to be already suspended. Yep. Yeah, one of the things about this this matchup is uh, Crossheart ideally only has one or two things on board, versus Bloomer has a bunch of can get a bunch of bodies on board, which I feel like Crossheart can't particularly deal with, hmm. especially if you have a cher if you have a Cherrymon um, early on and a, like a and a bigger DP like Bloomer on the board, you can just keep redirecting that one attack that Crossheart has every turn to the bigger body just to have it die and they can't get security checks off. So I think that's really important about this matchup. And so something that we actually uh, didn't realize is that it's, it's actually a misplay here. Uh, Zenjiro is a your turn only effect. So if you bring out something out on the opponent's turn, you don't actually gain the memory for that. And that's something that we didn't catch. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can't really use it as a quote unquote hammer spark if you want to, but uh, it is still a pretty powerful card. Let's him bring out a blocker there, and it depends on if he goes into that cross five, which he doesn't have any way to pull out the stuff the tamers underneath. There's still a bunch of bodies on board waiting to overwhelm you. Yep. Yeah, there's still a bunch of things like that I can't that this deck doesn't really answer, which is particularly why I've seen some deck lists with Crossfire. They play Death X, mm -hmm. um, and I believe there's one of the games I was trying to search for, but I just can't seem to find it. And once you go into your Blue Lord, it's kind of hard to get rid of the other bodies. And so you choose to swing that Blissom onto security, hoping to get more draws there. Uh, it doesn't really seem like it's very fruitful. And notice how when you drop this Crossfire from your hand, you have to pass over that much memory simply because there's no way to pull stuff out from under your tamers. Yep. You're running two Christopher and Numa, running two Taiki, but you just can't find them. Yep. So now in my turn, I'm just going to be uh, swinging these blockers, swinging these Digimon for game. And uh, I mean, this match is really interesting, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you liked this content and uh, have a nice day. Yeah, have a good one.